750 watt motor in that rear wheel and that is powered by a 48 volt 12.8 amp hour lithium battery that can be removed with the two keys they give you can be charged out of the bike or in the bike which takes five to six hours in the settings you can change the pedal assist levels from three five to nine you can also limit the power output from zero to a hundred also has a half twist throttle on the right side i'm going to show you how fast it can go on all five of the pedal assist levels and straight throttle i've got a full battery on speed mode one 10 miles per hour two is 11 three is 14 four is 16 and five is 18. the throttle is also 18. Now this bike does have uh, some weight to it, 66 pounds, but can carry a rider up to 300 pounds. I'm 185 pounds and want to see how long it's going to take to top the bike out. This is the acceleration test. Now in the settings, you can change from a zero to non-zero start. I'm going to show you what that looks like. And then you can also change the pedal assist sensitivity from zero to five as well. Okay, this is the zero start versus non-zero start. Full battery, pedal assist level five. Here we go. And about a half revolution, it comes on. That's on gear two. Now I'm gonna set it to one and see if there's a difference. Ah, that's still half a revolution. So zero to non-zero start option, there's no difference. Now this is pedal assist sensitivity, P12, and there's zero to five, so this is zero first. Let's see if there's a difference here. So there's about three fourths of a revolution. Power kicks on. It's kind of a, it's a decent acceleration. And now pedal assist sensitivity is set to five. Here we go. It comes on at the same time. All right, that is a little bit more abrupt. Get more power. It's very, very little difference though. Really can't even tell to be honest. Okay, so now that I know that there's not really a big difference between the sensitivity settings, this is the full test, zero to 20. Pedal assist level five, full battery. Here we go. Again, comes on about half to three fourths of revolution. And it's actually pretty powerful. Oh, and it hits like 17 and just flats out. That's where it dies. So 18, there it is. And now this is straight throttle. Ooh, that is immediate. About the same acceleration as pedal assist. Pretty good for price range of the bike. And there's 18. So both of those top the bike out in about half a block. The NXB has a range rating of 20 up to 68 miles. For this first range test, got a flat trail with some easy riding, not a lot of stops. Let's see how far I can go. The NXP comes 95% assembled. All you have to do is add the handlebars and the saddle. And this is foldable. The handlebars fold down, the frame folds in half, the pedals fold. So the bounce is actually pretty good. For a cheap Ram bike, I can ride that pretty easy without any hands. Now I have taken this over 35 miles per hour coming down the canyon and it actually handled that speed better than I thought it was going to. About 34, 35, the bike does start to shake a little bit, not like, terribly bad but just just enough to make me nervous okay uh says uh 76 battery life i've gone 7.28 miles and stopped uh, about a couple dozen times well, let me dive into the geometry of the bike it has a rider size rating of 5.1 to 6.5 and that makes sense because a lot of things are adjustable on this you can rise the handlebars up about eight nine inches the seat obviously adjusts like any other bike and so when everything is lower to the lowest position i think if you were 5.1 you'd feel like you could manage something like this as i mentioned before the riding style is a little bit different with these foldable bikes it's not really an aggressive stance. You're more upright than kind of hunched over over the handlebars. And so these are the types of bikes where you just sit back, relax, enjoy the scenery. I call them scenery bikes because it just gives you that posture where you can see what's going on around you. Down to 50% and I've gone 12.63 miles. I dive into the cockpit. You got 23 inch span on the handlebars. The grips are wing tipped, hard plastic, but they don't move and they're not that comfortable. Got a seven speed Shimano shifter going up is one at a time coming down I can go from seven to one the saddle is about average for comfort but there's a seat post suspension and that's actually worked out pretty well I can feel uh, you know I, I got about two or three inches of travel on that you got 20 by four inch all-terrain tires and they're kind of a standard tire I see that design quite a lot then you got a front fork spring suspension and that's okay down to around 25% battery life and I've got 19.48 miles let me walk you through the pedal assist and throttle sensitivity on speed mode one I'm 60 rpm speed mode two is pretty much the same resistance as speed mode one one. 
in the cranks. There's a big jump in three and pretty close to my cadence now. Speed mode four is where the bike takes over. My regular cadence of 70 RPM. Then on speed five, if I really try to crank, <laughs> I can get 18, 19. That's about as fast as I'm able to go. There's 20, 21. I think this is actually a little downhill section in the trail. Whew, that is a workout though to, to hit around 20. With the throttle, it's about an inch before it engages. There is some play there. Very easy to maintain a certain speed. I do like that. It's not like an all or nothing sort of deal. Going 13 miles an hour, if I punch it, you got immediate power. Pretty slow to ramp up though. And that's what I expect for a bike in this price range. If I'm top of the bike out, release it automatically or instantly cuts off. That wraps up the range test. My app recorded 20.74 miles with just about 350 feet elevation gain. Uh, the bike did die on me about a mile and a half down the trail, so I did have to pedal back. And just a heads up, once it hits about 25%, it dies. There's really no drop in power either. It was still hitting, you know, 18 miles per hour up until it died, which I was pretty impressed with. So for the price range, 20 miles is pretty awesome. Now for range test two, I've got a lot more elevation. Gonna have a lot more stop and go as well. Just riding the bike overall harder. Let's see how far I can go this time. Well, don't judge a bike by its price. That is the lesson I learned today. The uh, second range test is over. Uh, the app recorded 13.90 miles with 2,908 feet of elevation gain, which that has my respect. That's a lot of climbing. Now it did overheat on me coming up the mountain. So there was, there is that. I uh, let it cool off for like two minutes and then continued on and it was just fine. But uh, yeah, I mean, 14 miles, almost, you know, 3,000 feet elevation gain for a thousand dollar bike. That's pretty cool. There's no hill ready for the NXB, but the motor does produce 62 newton meters of torque. Okay, I got 58% uh, battery life. I'm gonna be on speed mode five and uh, starting to climb right away. This is a 14% grade hill, about uh, doing a two block long section. I'm in the seventh gear, going eight miles an hour and bike's doing about 90% of the work. I'm giving a little help in the cranks. Well, now it's starting to get steep. I gotta lower down the gears. Down to gear two. That's much more manageable. It's got better climbing power than I thought it was gonna have. It's still doing 90% of the work. Six, bouncing back between six and seven miles per hour. I definitely feel I need to help it though. Like that 10, 50% that I'm putting in is, is getting me to the top. I think it could do it on its own, but it'd be going a lot slower and up over the top. Now you got dual disc brakes. Gonna test how well they work coming down the same hill. I just went up for the hill test. Okay, let's start the descent. 40% grade, lightly braking. Got that squeaking, not the best. No pulse, a little bit of pulsating. Get some more speed and hard brake. Here we go. Stop, 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 stop. Now the tires didn't uh, slide, but that took a long time to stop. Uh, brakes could definitely be stronger. I mean, this is a very steep hill and I was going over 20 miles per hour, but uh, still <laughs> got to have a lot of pressure on the each lever to for hard braking. I've already adjusted them too, and they're still, they still give quite a bit. So must've not done the best job at that. But anyway, gives you kind of some idea how that breaks. Let me run through the uh, pad and the screen here. So there's an M button, hold it for a couple seconds, screen turns on, it is sunny out and I can easily see that. And that is set to the uh, highest brightness level. Up and down arrows to change the pedal assist level. Hold the up button to turn on the lights. Actually got a pretty decent feeling, you know, looking light in the front here. Kind of hard to tell, but the, it is lit up. There's a nice tail light attached to the rack. Hold the bottom arrow for the walk assist mode. And that will keep going unless you hit the brake. So you don't have to hold that button down. If you press the M button, that does switch through some different readouts at the very bottom here. Hold and press the up and down arrows to access the P menu. And then the M button to switch through different P modes. 
And the ones you're gonna be most interested about is P1 is the screen brightness, P2 is the units, P4 is the timeouts. You can set how long you want the bike to be on until, you, until it turns off automatically. P6 is the tire size. You do have to set them to the right tire size, just an FYI. P10 are the modes. You can set it to either pedal assist only, throttle only, or a combination of both. And on P14, you can reset the odometer. 